Hello and welcome to the online Master of Communication Management Program Student Spotlight Webinar presented by the Annenberg School for Communication and Journalism from the University of Southern California. My name is Phil Saloria and I am an enrollment advisor for the online Master of Communication Management Program. And I'd like to thank you for, making, for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us. So before we begin, I would like to review what you can expect during the presentation. In order to cut down on background noise, everyone is on listen-only mode. And if you are experiencing any technical difficulties, please be sure to refresh your browser. And if you have any questions for any of our speakers, please type them in the Q&A box in the lower right-hand corner of your screen and hit send. Feel free to enter any questions as you think of them, and we'll be sure to answer as many questions as time allows at the end of the presentation. Also, a copy of the presentation and recording will be available soon. So here's our agenda. Here's a quick look at what, we'll be, what we will be covering. First, I will be introducing Neil Teixeira, our Director of Distance Learning for Annenberg, who will share some information about the university program and introduce our speaker, Ernest Owens. Ernest will be discussing his experience throughout the program and, it, what, it, and what it means to be a student in the Master of Communication Management program here at USC. Then lastly, we will end the presentation with a brief Q&A session. Next, let's begin. Hi, Neil. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much, Phil. And thank you once again to everyone that has taken time out of their busy schedules to attend our webinar today. I'm looking forward to sharing some helpful information about USC, the Annenberg School, and many of the outstanding elements of the online master of communication management, including how you can start an application for fall today. As Phil mentioned, my name is Neil Tesheda. I'm the Director of Online Learning at the Annenberg School, and I've worked in the field of online and distance learning for nearly 20 years, developing online graduate, graduate programs at USC and also some K-12 programs at Google. I'm also an alumnus of the Annenberg Master of Communication Management program. I took the program on campus before it was online, and I'm finishing up my doctorate in educational psychology. My undergrad was also from USC in cinematic arts and anthropology. Let's start off by talking a little bit about USC and the Annenberg School. USC was founded in 1880, back when LA was a small but growing Western outpost. Since then, the University of Southern California has grown to become one of the world's leading private research universities. USC has regularly enrolled more international students than any other American institution of higher learning and holds research-based education that can be applied to professional practice as a cornerstone of the institution. In keeping with this, USC has long been a pioneer in distance education, offering master's level classes to professional engineers via satellite video as early as 1972. The USC Annenberg School is proud to continue that pioneering tradition by offering our fully online MCM degree to communication professionals all over the world. USC's Annenberg School was founded in 1971 through the generosity and leadership of Ambassador Walter H. Annenberg. You may know him better as the creator of TV Guide or Seventeen Magazine, or through his family's long legacy of supporting public television and the arts. Today, USC Annenberg is renowned for its innovative approach to communication, teaching, and research, and serves as an international hub for scholars and professionals in communication, public relations, journalism, public diplomacy, media, and education. The Online Master of Communication Management enables the USC Annenberg School to deliver the same high-quality educational experience in a rigorous, engaging, and collaborative way. By the way, that picture on the slide is our graduating class from 2017. Those are the MCM students attending our annual graduation barbecue prior to commencement. We also host a reception and tailgate for homecoming, so not everything is online around here. Before I discuss the program in more detail, I would like to briefly share USC's accreditation and ranking information, which reflects the university and the school's commitment 
to excellence in higher education. USC and the Online Master Communication Management Program have both been reviewed and accredited by WASC, and USC is currently ranked in the top 25 national universities by US News and World Report. Additionally, the Wall Street Journal's comprehensive 2020 college rankings placed USC in the 18th spot nationally and third among all Western institutions. Finally, QS World University Rankings rated USC Annenberg the top institution for communication and media studies in the US and the second highest ranked university anywhere in the world. Now we'll turn to the program's curriculum, faculty, and some of the advantages you'll have as an online USC Annenberg student. The Master of Communication Management program has been designed for both early and experienced working professionals. Everyone you'll be taking class with will play a role in your learning. You'll share your work experiences, you'll talk about issues that you are currently facing on your job, and you will get as much out of the people you are going to classes with as you will from your instructors. Our program is done in a cohort style, which means that you will go through the program with the same group of people over the courses of your classes. Typically, each class is divided into sections of no more than 20 people, but that doesn't mean that you will have the same 20 people all the time. Everyone will have gone through the same core courses that you have gone through, and as you go through the program, you'll meet a bunch of new working professionals from all over the world. You can complete the program in less than two years, 16 months to be exact. And this is important we found for working professionals. You have a lot on your plate. You have a lot of responsibilities at work, which is mostly being done by home, at home now, at home as well, and taking classes will add considerably to your workload. So we know that it's really important for you to get through this as quickly as possible. And we think that completing the program, two classes per term in about 16 months is the best way to do that and to achieve your goal of earning a master's degree from USC. So what does the MCM mean? This is a management degree for communication professionals. We operate from the understanding that communication is at the center of every enterprise. Communicators shape and change the world, and this degree is offered so that communicators like yourselves feel empowered to lead within your organizations. This is going to be a rigorous program that you'll be able to immediately apply to your professional career. We don't want you to think that online and easy are synonymous. We want you to think that online is valuable and rigorous, challenging you to think and expand your perspectives. We have a state-of-the-art course design and learning platform integrated with social tools that encourage personal and professional networking. Feedback we've received from hundreds of students over the years and graduates has been terrific. They're really getting what they want out of this program. The online learning management system that we use makes connecting with others in your class and with your professors extremely easy. And you will have a network of people all around the country and in some occasions around the world. You'll be able to maintain this network long after you've completed your program. We find that the learning is phenomenal online because in an on-campus program, you may come to class for about three hours, and as soon as class is over, students want to go home. In the online program, you're actually able to cover far greater material and far greater depths because you're working at it more incrementally over the course of a week or a module or a semester. Of course, you'll also be working in groups and working with your colleagues in your cohort on a regular basis. We think that's an extraordinary advantage of our online learning program because the ability to work in virtual teams is becoming a necessity in the modern workplace. Let's briefly talk about some learning and career opportunities. All students will gain relevant skills that enable them to analyze complex business and communication problems. They'll use critical thinking, writing, and presentation skills. They'll gather and analyze research to improve decision-making at any organization. And you can design your communication strategy with global perspective. Our program is open to students who are interested in careers in consulting at the management level, who work in training and development, specialize in public relations, advertising, business, all forms of marketing, as well as promotions and events. I'll tell you a few stories. We've had a student who was recruited by an alumnus of this program to work at at and and that was one of his personal career goals was work, to work for one of the largest uh, broadcast companies in the US. Uh, we also had a classmate who got recruited to work at Ketchum as a digital strategist 
because he collaborated on a group project with someone who was a VP there and was brought on to help lead a brand new team within that organization based on the work they collaborated on in this program. We've also had students who have moved into global marketing roles at Nike and Airbnb. And you'll learn a lot more about one of our current students, Ernest Owens, as we get to the latter part of this presentation. Let's talk about the classes that you're going to be taking and the curriculum you'll engage in. The way our program is set up, students will optimally take two classes per semester. Everyone begins with the core research class, Uses of Communication and Research, CMGT 540, and the core management theory class, Managing Communication, CMGT 500. You'll also take a key communication strategy course, CMGT 502, Strategic Corporate Communication. Now these three courses are vital to your work as professionals. It gives you the foundational understanding of how research is conducted, collected, and synthesized so that you can organize it and build strategy around it. Communicating that strategy is so much more important every single day. I think for those of you who are looking at the situation we're in in a global pandemic and think of the amount of communication that has to come out from every single organization every single day, there are leaders who are working every day to plan that out and to discuss the best and optimal strategies based on research to effectively communicate change in a highly quickly involving environment. And I think that all of you are looking at exactly the right program at exactly the right time. Additionally, CMGT 510, Communication, Attitudes, Values, and Behavior, that's our communication persuasion course and communication research practicum are two options that you will have for capstone courses. And those capstone courses will let you build an individualized project around a particular organizational problem that you may have uh, in your organization or something that you want to explore more deeply. Due to our limited time, I'll refrain from going through every course we offer, but I will point out that our curriculum is designed to give you an advanced applied skill set in the areas of strategic organizational communication, marketing communication, and market research and analytics. Essential skills you can employ to your advantage anywhere your career takes you. Please follow up with one of our enrollment advisors for more information about our curriculum. I'll briefly mention to our faculty. USC Annenberg has some of the leading communication faculty in the world. So it's great that you'll be learning from the same folks who teach on campus. And almost all of the faculty that you will have in the program have some combination of academic and professional experience, including decades long careers in industry and consulting. Almost all of our instructors have either a PhD or terminal degree in addition to this experience, which makes our online program truly different from the competition. I'd like to now introduce our student guest, Ernest Owens. Mr. Owens is an award-winning journalist and CEO of Ernest Media Empire, LLC. He is the writer at large for Philadelphia Magazine, where he covers a variety of social issues regarding race, politics, LGBTQ issues, and pop culture. His work has been featured in the New York Times, CNN, MTV News, NPR, and many more media outlets. He's currently on the 2020 Forbes 30 Under 30 list for media. He's studied communication at both the Annenbergs, that is both the University of Pennsylvania Annenberg School and now the USC Annenberg School. He's a member of the NABJ, SPJ, NLGJA, and ONA. He currently resides in Philadelphia with his fiance, who he met in undergrad, who is also a communication major. And Ernest first visited USC last year while traveling to LA to interview Oprah Winfrey. You can read his latest opinion piece in yesterday's New York Times. Ernest, welcome. Thank you for having me on. This was awesome. Great. Well, I want to begin by asking you what sparked your interest in the Master of Communication Management program at USC Annenberg? How did you come to choose the program? How important was it that it was an online program? Well, that was, that was, um, that's a lot to think about. Um, I think for me, as it was June when I decided to apply. So it was less than a year ago. And so it's, it's interesting because now I'm in my third semester 
Um, I've, I'm in my, I'm taking my two classes. Um, I'm in my, what, fifth and sixth class um, that I've taken so far in the program. And this fall I'll be done and I'll be graduating in 2021. And it's been just an interesting, you know, just 180 from where I was a year ago to now. But for me, I wanted a program that spoke to my interests, um, that gave me um, hands-on professional skills and, and advice and things like that, but also something that was flexible to my schedule. And I was very hesitant at first. You know, I'm an award-winning journalist. I've done a lot of traveling. I do a lot of covering. I do a lot of communications work. And I just was like, well, I don't really think I need a master's. And every master's program that I saw, um, you know, requirement have to be in the classroom. Like, I had to sit in a, a room. And I, I was like, I don't have time to take night classes. I don't have time to, you know, kind of do that type of in-person type of um, um, experience. And so I was hesitant at first to see that, you know, for me, the dream program would be a program that had prestige, legitimacy, um, had some really great professors, but also worked around my schedule. And that was a selfish decision I made in my head. And I was like, that's going to be my psych out for not getting a master's. And then all of a sudden online, I saw this information about U USC Annenberg. And I knew about the USC Annenberg program for, uh, for a long time. But I didn't know they had an online program, and I did not know they had a specific online master's program that spoke to the communication um, necessities and interests that I had. Um, as someone who went to Annenberg um, at Penn, most of the studies I took were the theoretical type stuff. We learned about, you know, communication theories and processes, and, and that was great stuff to learn. But for what I needed was something more that was beyond just the typical scholarly type of work, but something that was speaking to professional development to where I was in my career. And I wanted to make a transition not just as, you know, a, you know, traditional worker, writer, but thinking about leadership and management. And I had just started my company, Ernest Me Empire LLC, a year before, and I wanted skills that was going to elevate my expertise and also prepare me in the role as a, as a business owner. And this spoke to that. And I applied. The process was very smooth. And I found out I was getting accepted in July, I think. I think applications were rolling in really fast. I think it was the last week of July. And got right into this program and fell in love. So it, it's been a great experience. I'm really glad to hear that. And I will follow up and ask you more questions about how you're applying the curriculum to Ernest Media Empire. But uh, first, I want to talk really briefly about the experience. What has the online learning experience been for you working with classmates, using you know, the technology and learning management systems, uh, and how has it allowed you to be flexible? As you said, you travel a lot uh, for your reporting, uh, for your interviews, uh, for your career, so that flexibility was important to you. Can you talk about how you have uh, experienced this program with all of that in mind? Absolutely. I think one of the most important things is that, you know, it was, it prepared me for COVID-19 before COVID-19 was a thing, right? Um, the Zoom calls, the, 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 the mental preparation around, you know, using Google Docs and being able to communicate on WhatsApp with my classmates, um, being flexible, using new technologies, you know, using um, a really great uh, software, if people haven't heard of it, called VoiceThread. Um, all of these different technologies um, that allowed my learning experience to be more interactive and virtual without having, you know, to do a lot of that in-person type thing. When I saw a lot of my colleagues and friends, you know, that I'm in a, you know, a virtual, um, you know, classroom, people looked at me like, what is that? That's not possible. How are you really going to learn? And here we are in 2020, and colleges around the country are now thinking about how to do this. And what was, what's been great about this program specifically is that USC has been doing distance learning and have all, this program has already mastered that, has already had the technology, already knew how to work around schedules and things for this. So it was almost like I was prepared before I needed to be prepared. And uh, the transition um, through co coronavirus and so now has been almost seamless. Like I'm, I transitioned from my second semester to my third semester with the same enthusiasm and rigor of um, my professors while also having the flexibility and the understanding of them, and also just, you know, working around communicating through technology in a way that didn't seem, you know, like a new normal or awkward. Um, and working with my classmates has been great because we work in groups. A lot of the work that you do with this program 
um, there's a combination of individual work and group work, but you're working with people from all across the country in different time zones, and you're learning, you know, different things about society. They're all of them on the top of their game. Like I'm, I'm a great journalist, and it's been great to, you know, be able to be celebrated in the way that I am. But I'm also with people who are, you know, executives at, um, you know, um, Apple, and there was someone from my class that was working at Netflix, and there's all these great. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting because we're learning together, but we're also networking. And it doesn't even feel like we're learning in, like, in that type of way. It feels like we're working on these projects and, you know, it doesn't feel like, it's, it doesn't feel like that traditional, you know, classroom, we got to get this done type of thing. But we're really thinking about these things, applying them to our careers, and also, like, making lifelong friends. A lot of the connections and networks that I am currently applying, applying to my career and my work has been built off of some of the relationships I've had at USC. Um, and, and the network at USC is really strong. And just even in this field of media where it's super competitive and there's so many applicants all across the country, having a, a strong support system um, throughout these semesters has been phenomenal. That's so great. And if I could just ask you if you could provide some examples of how you have interacted with classmates and, and built networks while in this program because I think a lot of our prospective applicants and prospective students, um, they're looking for networking as a, an important part of their school choice. And they know that, you know, USC has a long tradition of this, the Trojan family, which is a very real thing, but it, it may seem to them that maybe that's not as important a feature of an online program. And I would say that, you know, we definitely make that uh, a priority within our online programs to help facilitate and build networking through collaborative work. But I want you to speak to that uh, from a personal experience. Oh, absolutely. Um, the moment I began to put in my Twitter bio and Instagram bio that I was attending, you know, USC Annenberg, um, you know, and using the hashtag fight on. And, you know, kind of, you know, including this into my, into my, you know, as I got to think, even as someone who graduated from Ivy School and had networking experiences on the East Coast, the West Coast opportunities opened up in a different type of way. Um, for example, when I was off to LA to interview Oprah, her, one of her publicist teams at OWN, which is the cable network that she owns, um, he went to USC and he emails me, and he's giving me this opportunity to interview her and to meet her, and it was a great experience. But he's like, oh, I, I see that you're also a Trojan, too. I, I study at USC for undergrad, fight on. And there's a part of me that wonder, like, that networking, that connection of, like, you know, like, was that part of, part of him reaching out? Maybe, you know, is there that, you know, that bias of, like, people loving the school and seeing someone who want to reach out and help? Um, from organizations I'm a part of already, journalism and organizations, media organizations, I found cohorts of people who were a part of the USC family that I never knew went to USC either for undergrad or graduate school, and they automatically embraced me and, and connected me to opportunities. I'm on Facebook groups, LinkedIn groups with people who are in media and have been able to really um, have some interesting conversations about the, the industry and the business, um, have been referred for opportunities television appearances. I'm going on CNN tonight, and one of the people who is a producer there was also a USC alum. And so it's a lot of interesting relationships and networks that I've been able to build immediately um, once I began to, you know, cite that I was studying at USC and that I was at Annenberg and that I, you know, was a part of this larger Trojan family. And so I think it, like, it, like undergraduate experiences, this is just another great large network. And for me, as someone who did not go to a big sports school, like in a school that you know was, was had that kind of national prominence in this type of way, um, I love the fact that I'm still even even though I'm in a digital program, getting that big, you know, USC big school experience. A lot of my um, you know um, classmates who are currently living in LA, they go to the football games. They're 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 going to the big events. They're giving they're given the same opportunities to get access to the campus. Um, when I went to uh, visit LA, visit the campus, just you know, just a quick tour, I was brought in welcome arms and and really, you know, we get student IDs, uh, which I think is is interesting. Like we still get student IDs, even though we're not, you know, on campus every day. USC makes it a point to still mail us um, student IDs, which is, has been very helpful. So 
to still get that experience and, and, and be a part of that larger family and even the resources and networks as well. Fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing that story and uh, good luck uh, on broadcast television tonight. I'm sure you'll do great, do us all proud. Um, I want to talk a bit about your experience with the faculty and what your perceptions of the expertise they bring to the classroom, how accessible they are to you as a student, and if you could talk a bit about this past semester, their commitment to our students, their well-being, and their success. Absolutely. I think one of my favorite things that I enjoy most about this master's program is that while there are so many students in the program, I think part of what's great about distance learning is that you really do feel an intimate connection um, with these professors. Um, I've never like felt like I could just email a professor and just you know just talk about the class in general or ask questions about a project and not feel this sense of you know hostility. Like look at this syllabus, look at this. It, it's it's pretty intimate and it's really cool that there is this built-in um, level of um, interaction through Zoom. Like there's, there's, there's a, some professors that I've in class that have had office hours um, where they just say, look, I'm just here for two hours on a Sunday, and if you want to ask me whatever questions you have about the course, um, feel free to drop in. And I've taken advantage of some of those office hours that were virtual. There's also um, class sessions where they bring some of their really super incredible, amazing academic you know, friends that they know. Um, some of these professors have industry experiences outside of just like the academic norms. There's a class I'm taking right now, Global Marketing, and my professor has, you know, worked for major companies such as The Gap and Bad Boy Entertainment, you know, with Diddy and all of them, and just has so much industry experience um, working with these major brands and, and have expertise in stories and, and ideas that just really, you know, make me feel like I'm getting industry perspective. And I think that's what's different from my undergraduate experience is that when I was working on projects and, and assignments, you know, I didn't have people judging my assignments that were, you know, in the industry that were experts that, that had friends that could come in and look at our projects and give us real feedback. So I feel like I'm in a, in a zone where I can be creative, I can think differently, I can challenge myself and not be judged, but also get the kind of feedback that sometimes you get at a job and you're you're having to perform super, super high. So this has been a great experience to just challenge my learning and thinking in a safe space, a very diverse space, and a space that has allowed me to think outside the box and really build some connections outside of just learning alone. I think that has been even helpful for me as a journalist, but also just someone in media of just building these contacts that can be references and sources for opportunities they have given me things to think about for writing that and ideas that I didn't consider before. And I just think even outside of just the professional development, there is a personal development in myself. I find myself really in love with learning again. And and that's, you know, and it may be cliche, but I, I just feel like I'm more a lifelong learner now, um, you know, post undergrad. So this has been awesome. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Ernst, for, for talking about your experience with our faculty. And I want to now ask you, how has the curriculum been applied and your experience in the program overall, not just the curriculum, but the experience overall in the program so far? I mean, you're in your third semester, so you're a little over halfway down with the program. Uh, how has it applied to your professional career and your ability, how has it helped support your ability to meet your goals? Well, wow. Um, I don't even know where to start. I think you know, I started my business under me Empire LLC. You know, it's a media communication consulting um, organ company, and pretty much a lot of it was content production, so writing and, and video editing and, and this type of work. But I really wanted to also delve into um, learning how to do consulting well and also work on my communication skills. Um, that can be applicable from just the media content production. And what, what I love the most about this class is that if you're someone that is in communication right now, you can learn like any type of aspect of media in these courses. Like I am a better marketer. I'm, I'm learning how to market digitally. I'm learning how to market um, in print and in all these different media realms. I'm learning how to do public relations. 
I'm learning how to also do some really corporate strategic consulting. I'm learning all of these things um, within all of these classes. Not one class is a, oh, this is a waste. There's no sleeper classes in this program. Every single class has played a pivotal role in, in strengthening my skills to apply them in very multiple facets of my company, but also putting me in the role of learning how business gets done in the, in the industry in general. I've learned a lot about why certain decisions are made or how to better articulate and challenge thought. Um, there's been a lot of soft skills I've learned in consulting and negotiating that I just wouldn't have had anywhere. And to be quite honest, this is like getting an MBA without all of the financial, fiscal stuff that oftentimes turns us all away from getting an MBA, but these really good, strong management skills that are just phenomenal outside of just the communications and media realm are skills that you can use at any level, regardless of whether or not you want to stay in media or not. And that was what I really loved about this program because a lot of these classes I'm taking, I'm like, you know, this is just good management learning, just regardless of whatever I choose to do. It's not one of those type of, you know, masters where you can feel like, oh, communication management, oh, okay, if I decide not to go media, I don't need this. No, you can use this for various aspects of your career, and I find myself applying it to the type of leadership I have on nonprofit boards. So I currently serve on some local nonprofit boards, and some of the ways in which, you know, we talk about, um, you know, consulting and, and working with different vendors and negotiating different strategies and creating a communication strategic plan. That is something I learned in this, in, in, in this program that I was able to take and apply to my nonprofit board I was serving on and basically laying out the framework of how to do this and, and, and get the success that I want. So, I, I, I mean, I think a lot of the things that we're, you learn in these classes are tangible things that you can immediately apply to programs you're in and also just some backhand knowledge of how to read and study this for future careers to come. Excellent, excellent. I really appreciate you taking the time to be with us today, Ernest. I know that you're very busy. Uh, you're doing great work, not just in the program, but professionally, and uh, I wish you tons of luck tonight. Just stick around for a little while longer. We're going to have a Q&A. Uh, I'm going to now uh, transition. Yeah, thank you. I'll now transition to talk a little bit about our admissions requirements. So before I hand the presentation over to Phil, we'll discuss what our faculty admission committee will look for in your application. I'd like to mention that there is plenty of time to get your application started and submitted for fall. <clears throat> Hopefully each of you will touch base with an enrollment advisor after our call today. Go ahead, Phil. Thank you, Neil, and uh, thank you, Ernest. So regarding our admissions requirements, just so everyone knows, the entire application is available online, and you really just want to make sure to request all of your official transcripts from every school that you've attended. Also, just know that the GRE or the GMAT is also required. However, students that have full-time professional work experience may qualify for the GRE waiver. So please be sure to reach out to your advisors so that we can help you determine if you would be eligible for the waiver. Another part of the application process is to complete a statement of purpose along with a writing sample and all students will need to submit a resume showcasing all professional work experience along with two letters of recommendation. I do want to share some admission tips. So communication with your enrollment advisor is an important first step, I would say. We are here to support you throughout the application process all the way into your first week of classes. Also, as Neil mentioned, just a quick note for students that are looking to get started in the upcoming, sem upcoming semester, there's still time to apply. If you're worried about not having enough time to take the GRE for those that are required to take the GRE, just reach out to us. We can go over some possible options that you might be eligible for. Also, don't forget, students can qualify for the GRE waiver just based on experience. Another good tip is just to make sure you're following the deadlines and the due dates in order to submit your application in a timely fashion. And as always, make sure to reach out to one of us with any questions that you might have. Next, I really want to wanted to just take some time to go over 
any questions that anyone might have. We did receive a few already, so if you have any questions, uh, please be sure to share them in our Q&A box so I can make sure that we are able to address those and we'll get to as many as we can. Um, we have already uh, a few, um, and so the first question, it looks like it's for Ernest. Hello, my name is Skyler, an incoming online MCM student. Uh, my question is for Ernest. What is the most valuable thing you have learned from the MCM program so far? <laughs> What's the harm, Skyler? Oh, my gosh. Um, I guess the best thing I can, can you know, just compartmentalize everything together is that I have learned that I can be multifaceted, that I can do multiple things at once, that I don't have to um, pick one direction, um, if that makes sense. In this program, you know, I have learned that I can be really good at marketing um, while also being good at just being a better researcher. I, I used to hate um, just doing research papers, extensive research papers. Um, and I, I think what I learned in this class is that it wasn't that I didn't like doing any of those things. I just wasn't doing it on things that I liked or I cared about. And I think what's really great about this program is that you're in a lot of, you're studying things that are so relevant and so current to your interests. And you can make them the topic. You can pick, I mean, there's a lot of freedom in picking topics you're able to work on projects that are applicable to whatever job you're working at the time or organization you're serving or interested in, and you can apply these skills and work on them, work on them in real time for issues and matters that you care about. For example, um, I was in a, a class, a, a marketing, um, strategic marketing course, and we had four companies that we could pick from, and I chose Beyond Meat. I'm not a vegan, but I was always fascinated about Beyond Meat's marketing strategy, and we worked on creating a marketing plan um, a communications plan for them. Um, and, and what was great about that was it's like I was able to read more and see something that I was already personally interested in doing research on, and that also made the theoretical and scholarly research, um, you know, not as daunting because it was about things I cared about. So I think that was, you know, that's the best thing is, is being able to be multifaceted, but also that you're able to really invest your energy and scholarship into things that you care about that are relevant to you compared to an undergrad, a lot of it is whatever the professor says and whatever, you know, you know, even in the global communications class, uh, marketing class, I'm able to pick a country, the country that I want to study. And I'm interested in Canada, but the fact that I even get the agency to pick those types of subjects and get to pick the things I want makes the learning process even more sweet. Thank you, uh, Ernest. Uh, Neil, we do have a question for you. Um, since you've taken the program in person and have experienced it online as well, how do you feel the online program compares? Great question. So if I had to do it over again, I would absolutely choose the online program. And there are a few key reasons. One is, as a working professional, which I was at the time I took the on-campus program, uh, it was exhausting to stick around at work, which I was working at USC at the time, for an additional three and a half hours after work to take a class. And I think all of my classmates were exhausted. And we really only focused on class during those three hours. And uh, lecture was not always the most appealing thing to do. We we're all kind of just waiting to go home. And that's not a great situation to be in when you want to learn something. Um, the online program, the way that our courses are kind of spread out over the course of a week with lots of different pieces of interactive media, and asynchronous content that you kind of take bite-sized chunks out of throughout the week, and then having a synchronous live session uh, for your course, that made it feel, and I think makes it feel much more engaging. Like I'm constantly touching base with the class, not just, you know, waiting around for three hours of lecture once a week. It also spurs uh, a networking opportunity that I will say is far more um, long lasting than the on-campus program. So, you know, I went through this program on campus over 10 years ago, and I've only really kind of maintained any contact with my classmates um, 
maybe a handful, not even a handful, maybe a couple. Whereas I follow a lot of our alumni from the online program on social media. And I see students who are from our very first cohort back in 2011 take annual vacations with their classmates, like people they built friendships with for life. Um, you know, their families are vacationing every year together. And we've had some students who, uh, we've had a student, uh, two students who actually ended up, you know, becoming a couple and having a child together. And then we've had some students who were asked to preside over each other's wedding. We had one student who was asked to preside over another's wedding. Um, we have had, as I mentioned, lots of students uh, who then become alumni and hire students, either from their cohort or from the program in general. And so if I had to do it over again, and this is no knock on the on-ground on program, on the on-campus program, as a working professional, I'd definitely choose the online program for the types of folks who are in the program and for the career objectives that I had at the time and, and still possess to this day. If you're looking at an on-campus program, you should choose it because you want to relocate to that area or you're currently lo looking at that area and or maybe the curriculum uh, is better fit for you. So in the online program, we only have so many courses we offer, whereas on campus, you have option to take courses from uh, a, an array of Annenberg classes as well as classes at some other schools at USC that may be applicable to your degree. So there may be some additional curricular opportunities for you on campus. But if you're a working full-time professional in communication and building up your management credential within the communication realm is what you're looking for, then the online program is definitely the way to go. Thank you, Neil. Um, we have a lot of questions coming in, and thank you for sh uh, as sh asking all of those. Ernest, there's plenty for you, and this one's directed for you. I had a question directed towards Ernest regarding what the workload is like for a full-time student while also working? Good question. Um, so I was a full-time full student. I, I always tell people uh, certain students do different things. Um, certain students are doing one class a semester. Um, I, I'm a, I really was a joker. I like, I want to go in and get out. <laughs> but I really miss it, though. I, I wish I would have stretched it more. I really love this program. I'm going to be really sad when it's over. Um, at the end of this year. But for me, I, I took two classes nonstop. So fall was two classes, spring was two classes, the summer is two classes, and then fall for two classes, eight total, I'm out. Um, and I will be going to L.A. and graduating in the spring to get to see everybody in person, and I'm super excited about that. But workload, um, taking two classes as a full-time student, uh, I would say that it's just a matter of, um, I mean, I'm, I'm a full-time journalist, and so I don't want to say that if I can do it, anybody can do it. A lot of the people I'm working with are on TV broadcasters. It's really flexible. Um, it's, it's all about strategy. Um, the work week for the, the classes start Wednesday, and then they end the following Tuesday. So they work on a midweek schedule. And so uh, my, my personal work has been that Wednesday I will look at some materials, um, do some readings throughout the week, and then on Saturday and Sunday is what I call my crunch time which is when I will make responses on posts and, and whatnot. And if there's a paper, what I love about this class is that big assignments are not due within the week cycle. So you get advanced time to, you know, do an outline and prep your paper and to do things. Assignments are, you know, what's immediate the week are like responses to the group chats and doing the reading. And then group projects and bigger projects, they're, they're, they're fleshed out throughout a, a course of several weeks. So you get time to pace yourself. And one of my favorite things I love about the class is that each week they'll do a thing called a checkpoint. So when you go into the Moodle and you go into the system, you get a checkpoint to just do a, hey, this week you should be thinking about doing research. And next week you should think about, you know, getting some of these types of interviews done for your project. Like they give you like a pace process. And so this pace learning um, makes it easier so that you don't feel like you have to cram something overnight. Um, I would say that you're probably given on average, uh, if you're taking two classes, um, you know, maybe 10, 10 to 15 hours if you want to, you know, measure it, I guess. But it's, it's all about how you work it. And, and I think for me, weekends are the, the, the time I give to doing some in-depth, you know, reading or things like that or, or, or taking notes and whatnot. 
Um, but it's all it's all relative. But it, it has been it's been doable. It's very doable. I I'm, I'm doing it, and it, it's not as intense um, as it as it may seem. I'm adjusting, especially for someone who had a five year gap. Like I graduated from Penn in 2014, um, and this I started this program in 2019. So it was a five year gap. So you know, the, it was a culture shock at first, but it wasn't extreme. It, it, it's actually, it, it, like I said, it, it's very doable. The professors know that we're adults. Everyone on the team, everyone is, is, is working to help each other, and it, it, it's like no one fails, you know? I mean, I mean, probably people do, but it, it, people really work and build each other up and really support each other here. And, and that, and, and I was very surprised by that, uh, which, which made me keep doing the classes back to back. Like, I thought, Okay, if I take two classes, I'm going to take a gap. But I just kept going, um, and I think that that you know that was all because of how well the faculty works and how the students work with each other and how we all get along. So, yeah, it, it, it's doable. You can do it. I want to add to that real quick. Thank you, um, Ernest. Uh, I just wanted to to mention that there was another question I think about um, are the online classes did they happen on the weekend or in the week, particularly the live classes. And, and Ernest touched upon something, which is we've structured our weeks to run Wednesday to Tuesday. So the first day of the week, uh, it doesn't start on Monday. It starts on Wednesday, which means that items that are due in the middle of the week, which you know, normally would come like on a Wednesday or a Thursday, are actually due on a Saturday or Sunday. And to what Ernest described, we've tried to design the program so that uh, some of the work, we know you're all working professionals, uh, some of the work that's due is due either during the weekend or after a weekend so that you have time to collaborate with your group mates on group projects so that you have time to catch up on um, discussion board posts and individual assignments. Uh, and the, the, live class, the live class sessions are typically held between the hours of 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. Pacific time. Um, and they, they are always recorded. So if you cannot attend a live class session, you are responsible for reviewing the recording, but it's okay in most cases if you have to miss a live class session. Um, there are some live class sessions that are mandatory, but you will know in advance from your instructor what, which ones those may be, and they're typically because there's some sort of either individual or group presentation associated um, with that that event, so like a midterm or a final presentation that happens live during class. And even then, if there's some extreme conflict that you cannot attend a live session that is mandatory, we always find a way to accommodate our students so that they can still present their materials effectively to an audience live, even if they have to pre-record something. It's rare, but it happens. Thank you, Neil. Uh, and we do have another question here. Um, it says, do online students have the same access or the same access to campus resources as on-campus students do? I'll take that one. Uh, the answer is yes, largely. Um, there are some specific resources that you may not care for that you don't have to uh, say take advantage of. So, for example, our on-campus on students have um, insurance and meal programs that, that are available to them that may make no sense for you if you're working and living remotely. Um, but generally what students are asking for when they ask this question is, do they have access to the library systems? Do they have access to student discounted uh, events and programming, if there's a speaker on campus or a football game or basketball or whatever it may be, can they attend? Can they participate? Do they have access to campus facilities for health and recreation? And the answer is absolutely yes. You are a USC master's student as a member of this program, and there are an array of resources that are available to you, even if you're not physically on campus. But if you do want to come to campus, then yes. Absolutely, you can take advantage of almost all services that USC provides. Um, there may be some additional fees associated with certain services that we waive for online students because we don't expect them to come to campus, that if you did want to take advantage of while you're on campus or before you come to campus, uh, you would have to you know, sign up and register for, for those services. But generally things like the library services, those are all included. And if you don't want to come to the libraries, 
um, our USC library system will send you the books that you need in the mail with postage paid and return postage paid so that you know if there's a book you need to check out, you can check it out and get it sent to you, uh, which is a fantastic advantage. Thank you, Neil. Um, we do have another question here. What if we wanted to do two areas like marketing communication and PR or another combination? That's a fantastic question. I uh, wanted to focus on marketing communication and public relations. Uh, you can be a comm management or communication management generalist, uh, which is a combination of different you know, areas of focus, which is absolutely fine. Um, we have uh, that communication management generalist uh, area um, set up so that folks don't have to necessarily choose to specialize in one particular area. So uh, if, if it's a combination of courses that we offer, we try to make sure that there are options for our students. And generally, uh, if you look at our curriculum, um, we try to give everyone a touch point around strategic and organizational communication, marketing communication, persuasive communication. Um, for those who want it, public relations, we only have a couple of public relations courses, but uh, we do offer them to our students online for those who are interested. And of course, kind of market, marketing communication and market research and analytics. So all of our programs touch on them. Um, and if you want to do some combination of those two, you're not forced into choosing one particular area of specialization. Yeah, what I wanted to add to that too is that, um, you know, for me, I came into, into the program open-minded. Um, I wasn't really fixated on one particular curriculum. There wasn't like, there's not a concentration that you declare or a major you declare in a program. Um, there's a lot of, of various interests and, and some things, you know, I will tell you that you'll take one class and you may like that professor or like this, this field and you start to dig deeper into that. Um, personally, I came in taking one strategic communication course and fell in love with it so much that I just kept on going. Um, and I've taken about three different types of uh, strategic communications, whether it was in the corporate field, the marketing field, but it's, it's, you know, I would say coming to these programs a little bit with a little bit of an open mind. Um, of course, looking at what's applicable to you, but some classes just, you know, kind of you find yourself taking and you're just like, you know, why not? Um, and for example, global marketing was that course for me. Now that, you know, coronavirus has really changed the entire world conversation on brands and, and companies and businesses. Taking the global marketing course, I would have not taken that or thought to take it back in the fall. But because of coronavirus, it was so timely. And I've been in the class for now three weeks, and I'm in love with it. And it's, um, I'm learning a lot of things and thinking a lot differently about how things are imported, exported, and even how to work with different companies in the future. So I would say classes, some classes are going to come in knowing, yes, I need this, yes, I want it. But you'll be surprised how your interest will change through time, especially given the economy and everything. Thank you. Um, Ernest, there is another one here for you. Um, hi, Ernest. I am interested in applying for the program. As a current student, what is one thing that you wish you would have known before starting the program? Oh, oh, wow. That's, oh, wow. That's a good question. Um, I guess one quite thing I would have would have probably I don't know. <laughs> I, okay, so I think now that I'm in my third semester, I think what I would have liked to know or whatever is getting used to um, making mapping out a schedule um, for myself more early on. So when I first uh, got into the program, I was like, okay, I'll take some, there's a couple of online webinars or whatnot, I'll just adjust. But I would have came in with a better game plan a little earlier um, to just m m get into the flow and understand the flow better. Um, and so the first semester, I did really well, actually. I got all A's in both of my classes. But it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a adjustment that wasn't so much based on how hard the classes were or not how hard they were, but just on my ability to, you know, just really plan ahead and just coordinate it better. And so 
so the, the 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 last two semesters I've been in thus far, I have looked at the syllabus carefully and have you know scheduled it accordingly, and I've had a better success rate and of just you know not feeling flustered. So I would say come in and really you know what's great about this class is that everything is given to you up front in a way, like you know what's coming up. There's no surprises. There's no Easter eggs. There's no drops. Or there's no um, you know, what they call it, October surprises, you know, you just go into the program and they have everything, everything's up front, everything, the syllabus, the, 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 the classes, the assignments, I mean, everything's up front, you know, and so I would just say coming into the program, you know, we take that first class, uh, you look at that syllabus, just look at everything early and just, you know, think, think ahead and, and, and take advantage of having all of this stuff in front of you. Um, so that's that's one thing I would have told myself early on, which is to to, to to think ahead, you know, because there's because everything's ahead of you, you know, everything's in front of you to do so. So that's what I would say. That would be the advice I would have given myself. Thank you. I'm gonna follow up on it that. It seems like quick, there, uh, Phil. Oh, oh sorry. Ahead. I just wanted to add yeah. to the point uh, earlier about balancing out the program commitments with full time work. Um, it all comes down to time management and how prepared you are to manage and structure your time. Um, this is a graduate program. Everyone here is taking it seriously. Uh, but in that first semester, it's very common for students to find that uh, their perceptions of how they'll manage their coursework um, isn't as well regulated. They, you know, the, they, they have a perception that they can just find the time to stay up with their reading or you know, their group work or their individual responses. Uh, and the reality is, uh, time management is so key, as it is in everything that we do, but particularly when we're trying to balance a personal life, a professional life, and our academic career. Um, and so, to Ernest's point, time management is essential. And it's really important that when you come into a program or any program, not just this one, that you are prepared and ready to structure your time and to keep to that schedule so that you can be an effective student, so you can be an effective employee, and that you can still find some balance to enjoy life with your family and friends. Perfect. Um, it, it looks like we're almost out of time. Uh, so if we didn't get to your specific question, we will be sure to reach out to you on a one-on-one -on -one situation, and we'll be sure to answer any questions that you might have. So. At this time, I would really like to, just like to thank Neil and thank you, Ernest, for sharing your experience. It really does mean a lot to us. And we'd like to thank everyone that is attending our live session. And hopefully, you have a better understanding of what the Master of Communication Management program does entail. And we hope that it helps you with the, your decision process. So at this time, Neil and Ernest, do you have any final thoughts that you would like to share? Um, yeah, so I would, I would, yeah, uh, yes, yeah, so I would just say, uh, thanks. Um, I would just say, you know, to, to everyone that there would be, there would be no better time to, you know, make that leap and do this, pro than do this than now. Um, I think looking back last year, there was something about doing it at that time and, 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 and making that transition as we get into a new decade where the industry that we know in this, in this field is changing, evolving. And there are so much more acts of people in the communications field, whether you're in media, PR, and these skills are so relevant and so current and so timely. And uh, the, the skills that are needed um, to stay in this market and to be competitive now would be is, is the best time, right? There's there's more flexibility. There's more time to think about, you know, what you want to do to a certain degree. But there's also this this program that isn't like separating you from the work that you're currently doing, right? Um, I think most people like myself was hesitant to go back to grad school because I said, oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to give myself a year or two years of departure from what I'm currently doing, or it's gonna be the program versus my life. And what I love about this is that this is such a, 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 a program that seamlessly immerses itself into your daily life in a way that doesn't make it feel like you're a student as much, right? There is those moments where you, you know, you have to sit down and you have to look and do your readings and things, 
But all of this is necessary and relevant to where you want to be in your career. And for myself, you know, my career was great, you know, um, before the program, but doing the program has given it a level of credibility and depth and nuance and strength and skills wise that I just feel unstoppable. And, you know, I feel just you know, just a level of pride and, and, and strength and just confidence, especially during these tough times, about what I can do and what I can offer um, in the field of communications and, and, and just being able to have a great support system and meet new friends and build great relationships with some really great, remarkable people is just the icing on the cake. Ernest, I would, I would add to that that if you see yourself as a communicator, uh, whether you work in the communication industries uh, that we've talked about or the ones that are commonly associated, associated with communication, if you see yourself as a communicator first and foremost, as an agent of change or aspire to be one, uh, then this is a great program for you. Um, I think Ernest can attest to the fact that uh, if you're applying what you're learning in this program uh, to your role as a communicator like Ernest is, um, you're doing great things with the learning. Um, and our faculty are here to support you. They're not just here to teach you during those windows of time that you meet with them live. They're here um, basically all the time to communicate with you, to help you understand, to answer your questions, and to help you grow uh, in your academic understanding and how you apply what you're learning in their courses to your profession. Um, our faculty try to respond to students typically within 24 hours. It doesn't always happen in 24 hours, but we're talking about our faculty being very accessible to our students. So I want you to know that if you do choose this program, um, you're not only going to be a Trojan for life, um, but you're going to have access to a network of alumni and faculty who really care about you getting what you want out of this program to support your personal and professional goals. Fight on. Thank you both so much. And again, just a reminder, a copy of this recording and slide presentation will be available in the next following days. Again, thank you for joining us. We hope everyone has a great day. Thank you.